guys, I'm Viola Benson. Welcome to Too Try To Be Crazy with me, Viola Benson, aka Daddy Issues. No, I don't like that. I'll start again. <laughs> okay, I just need to calm down. Fuck, my Adderall kicked in. Okay, hi guys, I'm Viola Benson. Welcome to Too Try To Be Crazy with me every Thursday. Um, today I have a special guest. Her name is Shannon. I'm not going to be able to pronounce her last name. It's like a pattern for me now, but I'll try. Shannon Beverage. Yeah, like, oh. a, like a drink. Why don't you just say that? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> she was born in Texas. She's a Pisces. She's a known YouTuber. And her um, the YouTube name she's known by is This Is Living. And today I actually have her because it's a really special, important subject I wanted to talk about her. She actually went to high school with Matt King. So I just thought this whole episode can just be about him. Like, what is Matt like? Like, what is he into? What does he do for fun? Like, his ho hobbies? Like, things like that. So um, she's also part of the LGBT community, but I don't know if we'll have time to talk about that because it's like, it's basically about Matt. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Imagine if that was the episode. That's it. What is he like? <laughs> Tell me more. Great guy. Great guy. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. So the reason Shannon is on my podcast today is because she is a big part of the LGBT community and she is also gay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Just looking me in the eyes. Dead eye. <laughs> is <Yay>. that appropriate? <laughs> yeah. What can I say? Um, oh, also congrats on your H&M campaign. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> that was really cool. Thank you. And you did it with Ricky too, right? Yeah. Ricky Thompson and uh yummer time and laverne cox yeah all gay people or queer people or lgbt people i guess is actually what it is I, wait i'm curious can you like if i started the podcast and i was like okay shannon's here and she's queer was that would, would that offend someone or am i supposed to say gay <laughs> no i think i for me queer and gay are both like overarching terms but I, people are more specific than me i mean it's it's a hard time at all like right now in this world to be politically correct so i get the fear if you're like not a part of the lgbt community i think i'd be like a lot more scared to be like gay queer like what is the word well i just want to talk to you normally though so i feel like i shouldn't <laughs> hold back just because it's on my podcast no you know what i'm saying yeah. and also you can ask me and i can answer it that's true anyway so first i wanted to, to focus about how we met yeah. So basically, there we have a mutual friend. Well, we have a lot, but one of them is Alex. And I interviewed Alex to come work for me at one point to be my assistant, Alex Papiccio. Yeah. I said her name last. Right. Okay, cool. So uh, it was, uh, I think, around a year ago. I interviewed her to be my assistant. And one of the reasons she caught my eye, I'm... You know the story, though. <laughs> it's so funny. One of the reasons Alex caught my eye was because I saw that she was a close friend uh, with Shannon. And I thought Shannon was just so beautiful. And I was so intrigued by her. And I saw that her and her girlfriend just broke up. And I was pretty sure she was single. I wasn't sure. So then I remember, like, I liked, like, one or two of her pics and, like, commented on one of the pictures, you know, oh. trying to see if she'll notice. She didn't. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> But I remember that was one of the reasons, like, literally Alex got the interview with me it was like we meet and then i'm like so tell me so how close are you with shannon tell me about <laughs> shannon i swear oh my um God. I yeah got alex a job pardon i said i got alex a job literally i get like really shy even though i act really confident so then when she wanted me to finally like come and meet you and she was hanging out with her room she has a roommate carrie so she, when alex was there with carrie and shannon she's like oh come by and i was like so nervous because like oh my god this is so embarrassing like what if she knows that i had a crush on her and so like i had to unlike the pictures and like <laughs> no, delete my comment no. yeah so she should like pretend like everything is cool like oh what's your name again Sh shannon oh, okay i wasn't i wasn't sure I think we drank that night though. By the end of the night, I'm pretty sure you told me that you knew who I was. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so cool. <laughs> Perfect. Very cool. Um, okay, so I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess one of my first questions I, I think would be anyone's question who doesn't know you. Yeah. It would be kind of, when did you start YouTube? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm from Dallas, Texas, and then I went to college in Oklahoma. I went to like the most conservative school that I got into, and then I was like, oh my God, I'm definitely gay. <laughs> like, what do I do? Now I'm here, I'm in a sorority, and I was like losing my mind, freaking out. So I started a blog, and that's where I started to like first come out. And then that just like really organically turned into me making like YouTube videos, because I slowly got this following, I think, because people were like, what the fuck's about to happen to this girl? She's like in a sorority in the South, like 
things could go really bad. So it like was a small following that I had and I was like getting a lot of questions. I was like, maybe I'll just make a video and I'll talk to all of you at one time. And that was like, oh my God, a long time. 2014. <laughs> that, was like, that was like 2012. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. And then it just like slowly, like it, I wasn't a YouTuber then. Like I, you couldn't even make money on YouTube really at the time. Like it was just like a one-off. All my videos were unlisted. Like you could only find them if you knew my blog. So it was a, I have a really weird YouTube starting. Like it wasn't like, oh my God, how do I get famous? Like Right. I think that's the most organic way. Is that same thing for me with daddy issues? Like it wasn't to be famous. It had to do with my low self-esteem and like me being depressed and me doing something to make myself feel better first. Like yeah, it totally. wasn't it wasn't an outlet. Yeah, an escape totally. for me. I was just trying to connect with anyone who I thought was like me. But how did the people find you? Like when when did you realize your YouTube channel is gonna blow up? Well, it really, really took off after I graduated college and I started making videos with my ex-girlfriend. And so then- Were you guys together at the time? Yeah, we oh, were together it. at the time. And when we were making videos together, I just think it was like kind of like serendipitous. Like it was like a time where there wasn't another couple that looked like us on the platform and like it just kind of blew up. I think I graduated in 2014 and I had like 5,000 subscribers in May. And then by December, we had like over 100,000. So it was like, okay, what should Whoa. we do with this now? So we moved to LA, obviously. You guys moved together? Yeah. How did that work out? I'm well, <laughs> I would not know the answer. Ex-girlfriend. <laughs> um, okay, so that's good to know. So technically, when do you feel like you realized you were gay? <laughs> like, when does it happen? When does it happen? I don't know. I mean, for me in Texas, I didn't know you could be a lesbian. Like, I didn't know... <laughs> so before college you weren't even identifying yourself as no but I did fall in love with a girl in high school and that's when it was like oh shit like I kissed a girl I like had a lot of boyfriends had all like not like a lot but like I dated boys I was like you've been around oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> like quite the opposite but I did have boyfriends and I was just like oh my god like all my friends were kissing boys and they're like oh my god it's amazing right like I want to make out with so-and-so I'm gonna make out with so-and-so and I was like is it do we really like doing that like is you guys think this is fun and i was like whatever i guess this is what everyone feels you hot all your friends up guys is this right yeah. though does this feel right for you yeah. I'm like, are you not... sure we like this <laughs> and then i kissed a girl and i was like oh my fucking gosh this is what you guys were talking about and then i like went into like a spiral of like oh my gosh i can't be gay i don't want to be gay like none of you are gay you all want to kiss boys i want to kiss boys too and then i just like it was just kind of me trying to push <laughs> like a square peg into a circular hole sort of vibe, you know? I was like, I will be straight. So that that's why I went to Oklahoma. That's why I joined a sorority. I was like, I will do everything in my power to be straight, which makes no sense. I'm gonna go surround myself with 200 hot girls and be like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love boys. <laughs> Did not work out. Um, was it really hard for you to feel like you were holding some secret or you were just completely in denial because you were like, I cannot. Like, no, this is. Yeah, no, it was really bad. It was really hard. Like high school after I fell in love with that girl, like the rest, I, that was like junior year. So junior and senior year were super tough. And it was just like, I felt like I had a lot going on that I wasn't talking to anyone about because it was only me and that girl who like talked about anything. Like I remember the first night or maybe the second night I ever drank alcohol was in high school whoops don't do that but um my friend had gone through this breakup that day and just ironically so had i like the girl that i liked was like we can't do this anymore like this goes against everything i believe in she's very religious and so like basically me and my very best friend got dumped on the same day and went to a party and like my friend was sitting there next to me like just venting about it talking like to all of these people about like oh brian broke my heart blah 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 and I'm sitting there like so broken hearted also and no one fucking knew. And it was like soul crushing. I think I got alcohol poisoning. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Drinking, you couldn't just say you were still heartbroken up for some guy. You no, know because like yeah. we were all best friends and like we were very like a close knit group of friends who like everyone dated everyone. It was like, very, like Texas, it's a suburb of Dallas. Like it's not like you had like a bunch of options. I guess I could have lied. I mean, when I went to college, I talked to a few girls and I would like, like I talked to a girl named Nikki and I saved her name in my phone as Nick. So she would like call me and text me and I would just be like, yeah, this is my friend Nick from, Oh, that's don't cool. worry about it, where he's from. But college is like such a big pool that people don't know who you know. 
You know what I mean? Like you could lie and be like, yeah, this is my best friend. Yeah, from but high yes, school. you went to Oklahoma. Yeah. Is that like, a, I feel like, is there gay people there back then? I don't, I mean, not that there aren't, <laughs> but I'm saying like, is anyone no. openly gay in Oklahoma? I wouldn't know. I'm not from no. the I US, mean, but I just assume those type of states are not as open. That, I didn't know any. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was the only there were like gay boys that I knew were gay and they weren't even saying they were gay, like boys who were like in like not to be like stereotypical, but like in musical theater with girlfriends. And we'd be like, <laughs> Tyler, come on. We know it's OK. But like no one was out. Actually, I only I kissed three boys in college. Watch out. <laughs> and one of them is gay. Now he came out. We both came out in the same month after college. Like oh right after college, I was like, Jonathan, why didn't you tell me? We could have not done that. <laughs> we were like each other's beards or whatever. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> oh, private parts? No, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay, a beard is like when a gay person dates another oh, gay person. You could. I thought you said we licked each other's beards. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so like your private parts. No, you, you said we could have been each other's beards. <laughs> got it because oh. i thought beard because like maybe you both have pubic hair down there oh my god so then it's like your beard that is so not right <laughs> not what i meant did you know what a beard is have you ever heard that yeah word? of course i've dated guys who i thought were gay and in my head i was like i like the them so much i would be their beard like i don't care i don't That's care amazing. yeah i think like two guys i've dated i'm pretty sure they're gay Me no three <laughs> three think, but it's now like, that i think about it i don't mind I feel like at this point, it's like, we could be like, you can be like my best friend. I'll love just you like Netflix that. Netflix and chill. Yeah, like, someone actually. just to talk to. It's fine. I don't care that you're gay. Like, I'll still love you. And you're rich. It'll work out. <laughs> Icing on the cake. <laughs> and you're rich. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll be your beer. Um, so do you think at any point before you came out that your parents may have known? Um, no. Well, based off conversations I've had with them no they didn't think until so that situation with the girl that I fell in love with in high school her parents ended up putting a baby monitor in her room and finding out that we liked each other but like it was very pg they just heard us talking about something thank That's goodness really creepy though that the very, parents had a baby monitor oh, in her room like clearly, what if she was masturbating it's clearly inappropriate she was like 16. so inappropriate yeah, so they like overheard us talking about something and then they called my parents. So they kind of like outed me before I was ready to come out. But your parents, were they in denial? Um, they just like, yeah, well, my dad was like, girls experiment. <laughs> just, okay, like, dad. She was like, you, okay. <laughs> and my mom was just like, you're not gay, are you? And I was like, no. Ew. Obviously not. Gross. Gross. What's that? I'm like, have you met my boyfriend? <laughs> Nick. He's taking me to prom, so don't worry about it. I'm straight. Did you go did you go to prom with a guy? I went to every dance with a boy, obviously. So you've had sex? No. So you're not a like what what? <laughs> I've never had sex with a boy, which I've also never said that to the internet before. So you've surprise. Never, you've never said that before? No, I've never said it. Okay, so you're what they call is it a golden lesbian? A gold star lesbian. A gold star lesbian. Yeah, yeah I'm also then a gold star lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> perfect we can relate <laughs> okay so are you still ever attracted to men at all i mean i find men attractive i'm just not attracted to okay them. so you can still look at them and be like that guy's handsome yeah. but you're not like oh i want that dick in my mouth <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god that's never yeah. crossed your mind <laughs> no 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 that doesn't hit me like that no it's different it's <laughs> just like he's cute or like at like anyone i can find like women attractive that i'm not attracted to as i'm sure you find men attractive that you aren't like yeah i like you so yeah yeah I, i've had i've had people before say to me though like i've been talking about someone and i'm like yeah but he's like he's really unattractive like talking about this guy and someone was like yeah but shannon you're a lesbian you think all guys are unattractive i was like do you think I'm blind? Like, I can't tell if someone's cute or not cute. Like, just because I don't want their D in my mouth, I still can see that they're an attractive person. Yeah. Well, that brings me to my next question. Um, are you, was it weird for you then before you came out to be attracted to all your friends? I mean, sorry. I meant, <laughs> do you ever, were you attracted to your friends? That was my question. To be attracted to all your friends? Because <laughs> you're lesbian, so you must you like, like every, every girl. girl. 
all boys are gross <laughs> all girls are hot that's how it works in the mind of a lesbian um, um yeah but do you ever okay how about this do you ever feel attracted <laughs> to your straight friends i think growing up when i looked back on it as like an adult now i see that i had some relationships with friends that i definitely had a crush on them but in the time like that it was happening it was super innocent i didn't know because like i didn't know i was gay until i fell in love with that girl and then basically i was just like focused on her until i came out but i definitely had friendships where i'm like well, I, I like really wanted her to be around all the time Aww. you know it was sweet it was innocent but yeah probably most friends i had most like my best friends at some point or another it was kind of like but I didn't know I had a crush. I don't know. Have you ever had a crush on someone that you weren't supposed to have a crush on? Everyone. <laughs> literally. Okay. Anyone around me for too long, I'm like, do I like them? <laughs> it's literally. We hung like out them. two nights in a row. Like, <laughs> yeah. should we Is this date? something? <laughs> I do that in my head all the time. Okay, perfect. So when you finally came out, did you have any stray friends offended that you never tried to hit on them or that that meant you didn't think they're attractive or something? Oh my God, that's so funny. I think maybe in different parts of the country that might happen, but in Texas, like, no. My friends are so cool, actually. Like, the... I think that also helped um, kind of like my YouTube channel and like my following is that I had such a good reaction and like I did have such a I wasn't set up for success in a sorority in Oklahoma coming out like a lot of people definitely were like, oh, that's not going to go well. And like the reaction was amazing. Like I'm in like four of my friends weddings this year that I graduated with from college and like I've been in three others like they're all married. What's going on? <laughs> but like the reaction was amazing and they're all like they're just not weird about anything at all like i took like boudoir pictures for my friend for her like husband for oh se sexy pics yeah got it but i'm saying like you would think that maybe people from like texas oklahoma would be like i'm not letting this lesbian take pictures of me <laughs> but like they're so cool and it's because i also knew Going into college, I was a bit like I was like aware that I was probably I liked girls. So I've always been like, like super conscious of like how I interact with like women in a way that I never wanted them to look back and be like, OK, that time that Shannon massaged my back for like four hours. Was that weird <laughs> for us? Like, so I would never do that. And yeah. like even like when girls get changed in front of me and stuff in my sorority, like everyone thought I was really modest because that would like turn around. Oh. But it was just me, like, I think just subconsciously, like, setting myself up to, like, never have looked creepy. Yeah. I bet anyone, when they, like, think about you in, like, a locker room, they just, like, usually boys, I'm assuming, they just assume, like, a porn scene. Yeah. Like, you, like, because you're lesbian, you look at them, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then you start to, like, the undress. complete opposite. I'm like, <laughs> nobody look at me. I won't look at you. We don't have to talk about this ever again. I was just, like, so, res I guess, respectful. But also, it was definitely out of fear of, like... I never wanted that. I never wanted someone to be like, ew, did Shannon enjoy something? You know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah, it could but that have been. sucks. That sucks. I mean, I'm happy that after college you decide to come out because so many people wait so much even longer. But I genuinely can't imagine what it's like to to have a secret in you and to feel different and and be, and feel like there's no one you can talk to for so many years. Totally. And then I mean, it must have been such a relief for you to finally be able to like wake up one day and be yourself you oh know? my gosh it was insane it's the best feeling in the world yeah i mean i can't relate i as someone that's i think i'm pretty i think i'm straight like <laughs> whatever i as am someone who's pretty straight even though i did comment on your picture that one time no i mean i'm kind of i'm kind of like i've only dated guys but like do i find girls attractive yes and i'm my belief like i love love so much and i'm such romantic and i've said this to just before that my belief is more like if I, if I, to me, that's why a lot of times when I date guys, it can be completely different. They look different and everything. It's because I don't fall in love with someone's looks. It's really about like their soul and their personality. So if I met, if I met a girl and she just happens to be like, I'm like, oh my God, is this my soulmate? I, I wouldn't care if she had a vagina because the first time I saw a penis, I was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? No, true. Yeah. So I feel like I, think, I don't really care what private parts that person comes with. I think that that makes a lot more sense, honestly. When exactly did you come out to your parents? I came out to my parents my freshman year of college, like after my freshman year. So like I came out to my family before I came out to my friends, which is all, like a lot of my coming out stories kind of backwards compared to a lot of other people's. Like a lot of people are like, oh, feel more comfortable around their friends. But like for me, my parents are from the East Coast. They're not super duper like 
Christian, like a lot of like my friends in Dallas and Oklahoma were. Um, so I was like less scared of my parents than I was of my friends. And my parents are also like the type of people who are just like, as all parents should be, give unconditional love. So it was like, it wasn't a fear of mine. Like I, I wasn't scared they weren't going to love me anymore. So it was easier to come out to them than it was to like some of my friends because friends don't really have to give you unconditional love. Oh, that's true. Right? That, yeah. So, yeah. So I did it kind of backwards compared to some people. I also like... I was out online before I was out in real life. So like, even though it was just like on this blog and my face was attached to it, but like, I kind of say I'm like the lesbian Hannah Montana because <laughs> I was like out online, but straight and in a sorority in real life. So it was like a weird process where like, you know, big YouTubers like Joey Graceffa or like Ingrid, like have to make this coming out video after like whatever, eight years on YouTube. And then they're like, oh, by the way, guys, I'm gay. Like mine was completely the opposite. I'm like already making like this gay content. And then I have to go turn to my, like all my straight friends and be like, <laughs> by the way, guys, I'm gay. And I have 10,000 followers on this random Instagram that you guys didn't know existed. Yeah. I had a straight Instagram and I had a gay Instagram. Oh my God. And then we had to merge the two. So but it's like let people. Were they fall. both of the Instagrams open? Instagram? No, they're both private. Okay. So even my like one with like like the gay following was a private one that I would look and I would like scour who like asked to follow and make sure if they like looked like a sorority girl, I wouldn't <laughs> accept it. I'd be like, no, she's like a pie pie from down the street. It's not happening. Question: Why does everyone make you haul jokes about lesbians? Because lesbians you haul. It's it's like one of those stereotypes that you're like. Oh my God, stereotypes exist for a reason because we do that. I don't know what that's about. Like girls just start dating a girl and then you have like a cat or a dog together in like two months and like basically live in each other's apartment. Is it because women were just more emotional? So then the relationship goes faster with the emotional side? I think that's side? what it is. I think it's just also like, yeah, I like a less of a fear of commitment maybe that women have. Like True. we kind of like you meet each other and if it clicks. Also, it's like, it's not a huge dating pool we're working with here. Like it's growing as people are coming out and stuff and like everyone's becoming more open-minded to like whatever, but like, it's still not like, it's a very, it's a small percentage of the overall population. So you meet like a really hot, cool girl and you're like, you're sticking with me. Like, <laughs> I can't lose you. Like everyone else is, I'm, I'm scared. You have to be with me. I was wondering, how do you feel, you know, A, I mean, I'm so happy for you. Like, you know, you can, you finally get to be yourself, but it doesn't, and just, and you know, your parents accept you, your friends accept you, and that's amazing. But then it's like, it gets to the point that is the rest of the world going to accept me? Whether you care or not, it can still be in the back of your head. How do you feel when you meet people who say that being gay is a choice versus you're, you're born with it or, oh, it's just a phase, stuff mm -hmm. like that? I mean, I think for me personally, I'm so confident in who I am and like, I have such a good like group of people around me and family and everything that like those fears for myself kind of have gone away, but it's more so now, especially having the following that I have thinking about the people that I know are in areas where they're not getting that love and support. And like, and then in areas where you're in countries where it's literally illegal to be gay. Like I have followers who message me and they're like, I can't be who I am in my country. So like the fear for myself is pretty much like, not there anymore but it's just like I have this fear for like the rest of the community and like I do think I feel like I'm a bit responsible to make sure that that can be that everyone have my experience at some point like it's definitely not happening anytime soon but like hopefully and like it's baby steps right like people, yeah like it we just legalized gay marriage in like 2000 what 15 that's crazy yeah like I came out with the knowledge that I was, it was illegal to marry whoever I was going to fall in love with. Do you have a memory of any coming out story of a fan that really touched your heart? Like there's so many that it's like hard to even say. I, I went on a tour like two years ago, this like tour called love is love tour. Yeah. I, I, I saw that. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> we went around from like different cities and just like, whatever it was, it was basically like an anti-bullying, like love is love sort of whatever. Um, but I did, I had this mom come up to me after one of the shows and I was at the merch booth, like signing someone's shirt. And like this, this kid, she's like, she came up to me without her kid. And she was like, I just want to tell you that like, I spent 
the, today's my birthday. She was like, today is my birthday. And I decided to come here and spend it with my kid because they came out to me like two months ago. They didn't want to, they tried to kill themselves and they're here today. And like, I would rather spend my birthday here with my kid Aww. than do anything else in the world. Cause I'm just so happy they're alive. And she was like, and I'm so grateful that you guys came here and like showed them this time because like, I think that like I saw a change in my kid today. I guess it's not a coming out story exactly, but no, no, it was. I literally want to cry. It was I'm, like, crazy. Back my tears. <laughs> it was it that like I cried and hugged her and I was like, this is the most well, emotional. It was the first night of the tour too, so I was like, there's something so touching about the fact that you get on the internet and yes, there's a lot of reasons why people get like to be famous and money, but there's something so heartfelt and touching about those fans that reach out to you and they tell you how something so small that you thought was small for you that like changed their life. You're, it's like, I think it still is so mind blowing to me. Totally. I feel like I'll never get used to that. No, definitely not. And I think it's, it's sad because social media has such a bad rep right now, especially I think in like our society of like, it's really bad for mental health. It's bad for my mental health. Like personally, I feel like it is. But it's sad because it does get a bad rep when honestly, at the same time, social media like saved my life because I did not know that I could be who I am until I saw that other people were doing it. And like I, the only representation that I had like before that, that I could see like regularly were people like Ellen DeGeneres and like maybe like Tegan and Sarah, which like super cool. But Tegan and Sarah like rock stars. So like the, I had some there were some like queer women but there just wasn't anyone that I ever saw that I was like, that could be me. Like, I'm like, if I could just pick up a guitar and sing and be like this badass, like lesbian, like I would feel more confident. But I was like, I'm just a sorority girl from Dallas, Texas, living in Norman, Oklahoma, where we have shirts that say, keep Norman normal. What the hell? And so I thought I didn't know I could be myself until until social media, where I saw other people that like looked like me or like had anything in common with me and I was like oh my gosh if you can do it I can do it and so like social media as negative as it has been on so many people's like mental health and whatever like it also definitely is like a force to be reckoned with like people are relating to people that they would never ever in their life get to meet which yeah is cool. yeah I agree that all I, that's why I try to look uh, social media in a positive way and I try to bring positivity to social, social media. media it's so important for me to always like my whole podcast is literally about like self-love and healing and like yes I make jokes and things like that but it, and and the weirdest thing is that when people always think if they're feeling down or they're in a bad mood that they don't want to deal with anyone else's problems but the truth is is that whenever you give advice or you try to make someone else feel better it makes ends up subconsciously making you feel better so totally. people totally. should want to help other people more because it'll, it will make you happier yeah and just sharing like real emotions like real human emotions through social media is so healing like obviously you don't want your whole account to be like i'm sad today and i'm sad no. today but like just showing people i i really respect that like a lot of people that i follow and like a lot of like people with a good amount of followers have been more open about like their issues with mental illness or like just mental health in general and being like, hey, you know what, this last month was hard or, you know, what, like this last month was amazing. But like to become real people and less filtered is really hard, especially I feel like up until recently, everything's been so filtered, like people right. just want to look amazing. And I think I kind of feel like everyone is like hitting this like breaking point where we're like, OK, are we all happy? There's no fucking way. <laughs> like, I'm not happy every day. So there's no way all of you are. And like, it's just like something that's like a it's like a domino effect. Like the more people are real and honest. Yeah, you people, see people are really appreciating it. it. And yeah. like, I think people really appreciate it. But I mean, some parts of it, I think it's almost hilarious when I see a model now when she posts like a picture of herself with no makeup on, which is so normal. And people will be like, you are so brave. Like forget yeah, the soldiers. <laughs> like forget the soldiers or fought for our country. Like you though, yeah. you're the bravest. Because uh -huh. you posted a picture in good lighting and you filtered your face, but you didn't wear makeup because you wrote hashtag no makeup. No. So I'm going to believe you. Yeah. No. <laughs> You're brave. It does go. It does go both ways, too. You also see people making posts where they're like, oh, my mental health has been really struggling. And I you don't want to, like, doubt yeah. that people are being real. But, like, you also do see that some of those posts are, like, successful. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like it's it's a crazy world we live in, like, with Instagram having such a like a n numerical like valuation of like how your post did like you can see your success like it's right there and everyone else can see it too so like yeah 
I definitely think people take advantage of like even just like saying like, oh, my life's yeah. not perfect. But look, I'm on a jet. Like what? <laughs> So like, yeah but i'm in the back yeah so. pick, <laughs> pick the timing of those <laughs> honest posts um well speaking of mental health like i know you've also been an advocate for mental health and you talked about before about battling with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and i think you even made a like a video about it right yeah i did yeah yeah <laughs> i know okay what made you finally want to make that video and did you always were you always battling with anxiety and depression or did, yeah. did you hit a really low point recently or one point? Like what? Tell me. No, totally. I think, um, you know, what's weird is like, I have battled with depression and anxiety probably for a long time, but for so long, like when I was in the closet, I had something to attach it to, you know? And I was like, oh, I'm depressed. I'm anxious because I have this huge secret. Like anyone would be depressed and anxious, right? And that lasted for until I came out and then I came out and, you know, there's this like this period of like bliss of like, I'm free. I can be who I am, whatever. Mm -hmm. and but then like a year or two years after I came out, I think I like hit this like first like lull in my life again, where I was like, wait, I feel really anxious and depressed the same way as I did before. But like now I don't have like, I don't have a big secret or I don't have like, there's nothing, there was nothing happening for me to feel those feelings. And that was like the scariest moment of my life to be like, oh, you can just like feel depressed or anxious and it doesn't have to be attached to like some big life event. Like you just mental health is like something that like, like ebbs and flows and sometimes it hits you. But that was the first time that like, it wasn't like sexuality based. And I was like, oh my God, like I thought that I, I thought that I like beat that almost in a way, you know, I was like, that'll never happen to me again. And so that's been, since that happened, that happened once. And then I've been through probably like three or four, like other, like big like maybe like months couple months of like depression where i'm like oh my god and it's just not based off anything and that's so frustrating because at yeah. least when it was coming out it was just like oh this i'll is come what, out and i'll yeah. fix it and then now like it's just like oh my god you're telling me i'm just like an adult who has like i go through moments of not being happy i'm not stoked about that like because you can't fix it it feels like i feel like i can't fix it what have you done to kind of figure out how to do force yourself to be happy or how to change or some people don't even know that when they're depressed like yeah. are you lucky enough that you're able to notice i think that because i've been through moments like where i know that feeling like it was i recognized it you know which is nice like good i think that's like definitely the first step is to like just recognize that something is kind of like not right or like you don't feel 100 percent right because then you can start taking steps to try to make it better like and for me that's like just trying to do things like get out of bed in the morning like not afternoon you know what i mean mm -hmm. like get up do things leave my apartment like not listen to only sad music and also it also is important i think too to like give you some time to also lull in that like feeling like if you need a day where you only listen to sad songs and you sleep till one o'clock and then you get out of bed and you just watch movies all day I think that's okay too. It's just like finding a balance where you give yourself a break, but then also you are like, we're not getting stuck in this. You know, you have to like keep doing shit or it just will like keep perpetuating itself. This is what I, why I love sometimes just sitting and talking because what you were saying about your depression, where you were just thinking, well, I'm depressed because I didn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. But once I come out, like everything will be fine. It never clicked in my mind that I kind of went through something similar and that's why I hit like a really bad depression at one point because I, I didn't, I couldn't understand like why we'd be depressed because I was born with enamel deficiency. So growing up, I would, we, we, my parents, my mom and I would be fixing it a lot, but, and something that I haven't talked about yet, which I will eventually, but like being bullied for it and like hating myself and all that. And then when I became daddy issues, like um, before I quote unquote came out as daddy issues because mm -hmm. I was anonymous for two years, I remember I was like, I have to fully like 100% fix it because I don't want to get bullied for it. And I was like, this is it. Like, yeah, I will finally feel beautiful and I will finally love myself because it was one of the first. So that's what people don't understand. Like if they think I act cocky or whatever, a lot of times it's also fake confidence and fake it till you make it. But it's it's literally because I've only feel like I I feel like I only found myself or love myself since I started daddy issues. But I feel like I only felt, you know, beautiful the past maybe I've been doing this for five years. So the past three years. Mm -hmm. So like that's what people don't get. So then when I finally quote unquote came out as daddy issues, I fixed my um, 
my birth defect that completely would be un unnoticeable to most people. And I was like, now I will love myself. Now I will never be depressed. Now I'll be finally I'm fucking beautiful. And then like that's why suddenly when I'm getting jealous of girls again or I don't feel good about myself, I first I I was like, what? yeah it doesn't make sense no totally i'm supposed to love like i can't be depressed now like, be, get, like yeah i fixed it it's I crazy fi I fixed but the thing that was like the yeah. problem and so now everything will be good but i never realized that was my thought process literally until right now you talking it really? hit me that it was like <laughs> that makes so much sense because three years ago when i sunk into insanely bad depression i didn't know how depressed i was until i went to sleep I, I wrote a because I write I like to write so I wrote a poem and the next day when I woke up I just read the poem and I wrote it really late at night and I, I forgot what I wrote and when I looked in the morning it was when I was reading I was thinking like who is this girl she sounds insanely suicidal yeah and she sounds like she needs to talk to someone that's when I was like whoa mm -hmm. holy shit am I depressed like what's happening and once I realized I was depressed I, I you know I started to work on it it really get out of that rub but it took me months but i was also depressed for months but yeah i genuinely now think it's because <laughs> of what you said it didn't i don't <laughs> know no, totally that. i think that's like relatable to a lot of people it doesn't have and even like to things like going through a breakup right like or just like anything that you're like i'm when you can attach your depression to something it feels way less scary i think and so true. i think when you are just feeling depressed and you're like what the fuck like I live where I want to live. I'm like out and proud. I'm doing all the things I thought I'd never do. Like I have a like hot girlfriend. I have this. I have that. Like I have everything that I thought I'd never get. Why the fuck am I sad? And then you're, that is so much more. And then you feel shame too. Yeah. Cause you're like, I shouldn't be sad because. Like I have, I have no right to be sad. Exactly. And then, and then it's even worse cause you feel shame. So you can't even talk about yeah. it. It's, it's great. It's stupid. <laughs> it's so just so stupid. stupid. Everyone be happy. Yeah. Just, just do it. <laughs> like next advice. What do I do if I'm sad? Oh, just be happy. Yeah. Just like do it. <laughs> One time I tweeted and I was like, oh, I'm so anxious. And this girl tweeted back at me and goes, just relax. <laughs> I was like, oh well, my God, you fixed it. Why did I think of that? <laughs> why did I? I feel great now. Um, do you have a crazy story about dealing with someone that was incredibly homophobic? Hmm. Um, yeah. Well, I... Yes. I mean, definitely have a lot of like kind of just random instances of like mini like little hate crimes where you're like, OK, it's not like worth it to like I think for girls or for me, I'm always putting my safety first. So like because a lot of like homophobia that is targeted at me comes from men. Like I don't have a lot of girls who like walk by me and are like, die. Like, <laughs> like it's usually like it's usually men who feel like insecure that they're looking at me and I'm saying, I don't want you. And it's just like little dick energy. But like, I am, I'm pretty small. Like, I'm not going to fight a man. So like, when I like get into these instances, I usually just try to let it like run off my back. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm not, it's 2 a.m. We're like at a bar. Am I going to make you a better person in this moment? No. And what is the, uh, the other option is like, maybe I get like, hurt physically i'm like no thank you i did get spit on in amsterdam and that was a bit of a <laughs> that was probably my worst situation but i'm not even sure if that was a hate crime or just like because you were american <clears throat> well, I was talking to a girl but we were just literally talking and this guy walked by and he was like um oh he goes i bet you want this big dick don't you and i looked at him and i go oh my god fuck you which is so weird i'm not confrontational it was just so vulgar and in my face that I was like ew what the fuck and he turned around and he spit on me in my face and I was like shocked just like in utter shock I couldn't believe it and it like got on the girl too so it was like but it was like literally hit me right in the face I'm like oh oh my god it, like my mind's like just immediately like I have an STD now and then I don't don't worry but I was just like ew what the fuck like germs and then he started walking away and I flipped him off and like, I just went, was like, okay, fuck you again. And then he turned around oh my God. and he spit on me again. What? And then he walked away. We're in Amsterdam, right? So then he walked away and he goes, don't you ever fucking talk to me like that again. And I'll drown you in this fucking, this fucking canal. And I was like. Of his spit? That was. His <laughs> he was going to drown me over me saying fuck you to him after he said, do you want this big, or I bet you want this big dick. I'm like, you could not be more off base. You're, I'm not your audience. 
Wow. It was crazy. Yeah, but I'm that's because I'm not sure if that was like based off homophobia or just um, I think that had to do with masculinity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But damn, that's I don't even know how to react if someone spit on me. I know I cried. I went home and cried. I would, got in the I shower. I hundred percent cry. I don't. Yeah, I was like that was like the weirdest, most like I don't know. Yeah, that sounds more like like these days a Hollywood story because I feel yeah. like I have stories where brands that I won't work with because one of the men has been really aggressive and yeah. I go home and cry about it. Yeah, so. that's just like toxic masculinity and yeah, yeah, that was crazy though weird story i don't think yeah i can't think of anything like homophobia based that's more than just like the stupid like me saying i'm gay and someone being like i don't i don't believe you like you're not like and then just like wait has anyone ever said you're too pretty to be gay oh my god yeah <laughs> and it's like yes and that i slid into your dm and i was like are you gay because you're too pretty to be gay <laughs> it was me i did it <laughs> perfect no that and like are you sure you're a lesbian and Oh, that's because you just haven't found the right man yet. And then what else? Oh, oh I oh. bet if you felt a dick, you would change your mind. Oh, is that what people- the, the literal worst one that drives me fucking crazy is I'll say, which I stopped doing this, by the way. Like I kind of like I went through a period when I first moved to L.A. where someone would hit on me and I'd be like, oh, I'm gay. I'm sorry. And then I realized that that is just like opens. A a, it's just yes. And it's just like this opens this like cornucopia of like. 8 billion douchey misogynistic things that someone wants to say and I was like I gotta stop doing that because it just doesn't help anyone so now I will be like oh sorry I'm I'm not available or whatever I'll just say anything I'm but that available. or just yeah so but the worst one by far is when I say I'm a lesbian and then they go don't worry I'm a lesbian too oh my I'm God. like and it you it would blow your mind how many men have said that to me I'm like that is not clever like you have not created something that you did not invent that saying. <laughs> so for any straight men watching this or listening to this, don't say that. It's not cool. What's a common myth about lesbians that you just want to squash right now or that straight people think? Like to debunk um, that we hate straight men. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's literally one of my questions. Yeah. What's up with <laughs> people thinking lesbians hate straight men? I don't know. I'm, I, it's probably because of experiences like me saying that in the bar. And then that's what straight men associate every lesbian with is like, cause it'll be a conversation like, I'm sorry, I'm gay. And then they are like, are you sure? And then you're like, fuck you, please leave me alone. And then they're, they're like, can... lesbians hate men. <laughs> also, there used to be this like weird, I don't know if this is still a thing, but that gay men and lesbians don't like each other or don't get along. Okay. You just reading off of my question. Really? <laughs> that's, that's a myth that I've heard before too. Yeah, and I have before too. I love I I get along with everyone. Anyone who treats me with respect and like just is like, oh, Shannon's gay. That's it's. I will be your friend. Like I don't care what who like doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, anything even down to like beliefs like that doesn't matter. Even if like I have a lot of Christian friends that I think even some of them might in the back of their head they're not vocalizing it to me, but maybe you're like, Shannon's sinning. And, but it's okay. If they can think we can have our own beliefs and like, as long as we both can treat each other with respect, I'm like down to be your friend. Like, yeah. Cause I probably have different beliefs than they have, even if they, they're not so focused on them being like sinners, but. So speaking of religion, do you believe in God? Holy moly. Um, religion has been something that since like growing up in Texas and then being in Oklahoma, it's been like something that I've had to revisit and like, I want to learn for myself. I think I spent like 22 years in an environment that was just like, you will be Christian because we're all Christian. Like there was never, no one ever was like, do you want to like learn about Christianity? It was just like, no, 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 we're all Christian here. So like now I feel like I'm at, I feel like right when I moved, I was feeling very like anti-establishment, like very anti like church and all of that because I had heard and been to a lot of services that made me feel like I was unwelcomed. So then like I spent a lot of time being just like very anti it. And now I feel like I'm getting to like a point where I'm ready to like revisit and decide for myself. And like, I don't know. So I feel like, is this coming from, cause this is the, the reason I'm asking, cause it, I'm Jewish. So, yeah, yeah. but I am confused about the fact that sometimes people assume that if you are queer or trans or anything then you can't possibly believe in god because it, it it like 
it doesn't go with each no, other. No, no. I don't understand that part because no. you can be a Christian and you can still be gay. Like God, I feel like God is going to love you regardless, you know? Totally. So I a hundred percent do not believe that Christianity or any religion and being a part of the gay community are mutually, exclu- mutually exclusive. Yeah. I know a lot of, a lot of like really religious, um, queer people like of all kind, like Jewish Christian, yeah. all, like all walks of life. So that's why I asked if you believe in God, because I want to take that away for people assuming, well, if you're that, then there's no way you can be like, not religious person, but there's no way you believe then in God. No, no, no. I'm definitely spiritual. And I definitely believe in something. I'm just like, like what I'm saying is I'm just trying to like figure out what I believe in for myself, by myself, like reading about stuff, listening about stuff. Like I want to like, I want to know that I came to my belief by myself, like, and on my own and not just because I grew up in an environment where that that's where I was told to be. Cause like, if I grew up in like a different country, I would be a different religion just because that's where I grew up. Right. Like I want to like have my own beliefs. And I love that. I think, I think sometimes people assume that if you're raised a certain way or whatever, like your, your opinions will always stick the same. And I think it's so important to show that people can change. I mean, a good example is I'm from Russia. Yeah. Um, I was born in the Soviet Union when I was still a Soviet Union. Being from Russia, I'm fully aware of how Russians view gays. It's pretty known thing. If you guys are unaware, I'm here not to offend anyone. But like I've told the story to Jess is that one thing I've been told about gay people, at least back then, I don't know if it changed a little bit in Russia, but back then, when- gay people didn't exist in Russia. There wasn't really a thing or you wouldn't be open about it because when anyone in Russia thought about someone being gay, it was more it had to do with men. So I don't think lesbians existed, period. Yeah, that's but, what I thought it too. But for the gay men in Russia, basically, if somebody said, oh, that guy's gay, it means he's like the scummiest of the scum of the scum because you basically got to go to jail and in jail, men fuck men. So you're the bottom and you're the guy getting fucked and that's the homo, quote unquote. And that's like, that'd be the definition in Russia back then. Yeah. And then I grew up in Israel. I never realized that I didn't have one gay friend because mm-hmm. Israel, we're, it's a religious country. Yeah. I don't think I even realized how, how, um, how protected and what is the word called like um, um sheltered sheltered i was but i've never had one gay friend i mean looking back now i think one of my friends was gay but i didn't realize it never crossed me so when i moved to america and in high school and somebody talked to me about somebody they know being gay or something like that my first thought was well it's a choice so why don't you just say you don't want to be gay yeah. and and it I'm not embarrassed to admit it because I don't think like that now, but it is important to show how you can grow up a certain way and be so ignorant and you can still, no matter what age you are, completely change your mind. And my mother who grew up in strict Russia and everything, I've spoke to her before and I said, mom, would you, if I decide that, if I decide, if I, if I told you that I was gay, would you like love me less? I was just curious because my dad's very strict. And Mm -hmm. she said like Violetta, first of all, like I, I would, I want you to find love. Like, I want you to be happy. That's what I care. And she goes, I would be a little sad. And I said, why would you be sad? And I thought, oh, she's going to be sad because I'm gay. And she said, no, I'll be sad because, you know, life is already so hard. Like, life is hard enough. And it would break my heart to think of you, um, like, going out there and dealing with people who may not understand you and I won't be able to protect you. And that's what makes me sad because life is already so hard and and your life is going to be even harder. Yeah. And I was like, you are the most amazing woman yeah, in the so world. Sweet. Like, I love you. That's so sweet. You know? And it's also really weird because that's like verbatim what my mom said to me. Parents just, mothers just know. Literally the same thing. She was just like, I just don't want your life to be harder than it has to be. Which is so funny because my life is, everything that I have, weirdly, is because because of who I am. And like, because of like, this journey I've gone through, like coming out. So like, in, in so many ways, being gay has made my life like, I don't know, easier, like better. And I think that it could be that for a lot more people too. And I hope like in time as like people open their minds and like people, if you can change your mind, like it can happen to anyone. And I think it does. I think it takes, I really think it takes like one human interaction, like one bond with one person, like to really change your mind. Because I think for me, like for my college friends, me coming out was a big thing for a lot of them. Cause it was like, okay, like I never thought that like I'd have a gay friend, but like, I love Shannon. So I guess I don't care, you know, and that's, that can change someone's whole life. So like, if you, I don't know, just being brave enough to be yourself is like in and of itself, like helping, um, 
change the world. Yeah, and and you and I think always you shouldn't be embarrassed to ask questions. But I think one of the things that made me kind of understand that it wasn't a choice was I had a really close guy friend, and um, he's Jewish and he comes from a religious family, pretty Jewish religious family, and we would have like Shabbat dinners and stuff like that. And his mom would say, "So when are you? When are you guys gonna date?" And jokes like that. And I could tell he was gay, like I could feel it. Yeah. And I was like, and I would look at his eyes, and I feel like I, I would see his pain, and it made me. And I think like he almost, in a way, fully changed my mind because I, I kept thinking like this guy's hurting so much, pretending, and he was already in his thirties. So like this guy's hurting, and for his thirtieth birthday, what did he do? He went to um, Britney Spears concert in <laughs> Vegas. Not that there's anything gay about that, but it's 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 a, it's a hint, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And one time we were like, What's who's your perfect woman? He's like, Well, my perfect man, I mean woman <laughs> oh, is no. And it was oh, like no. as funny as it was for all of us, like knowing that he yeah. is, it it still it would it's, break my heart because it's like, fuck, like you're gonna go your whole life pretending to be somebody you're not just to make your parents maybe happy because you think your parents may not accept you. Yeah. Like your parents are gonna love you regardless. And if someone doesn't accept you, then fuck them. Like Totally. I mean, I always say like the only choice that you have in being gay is whether you're going to like be honest about who you are or you're going to try your whole life to like please the people around you. Like that's the choice. There's the choice isn't like, am I gay or am I not gay? It's just like, are you going to like be brave enough to be yourself or are you going to just like live your life for everyone else? Which is so sad. You get one fucking life. Like, yeah, why waste it making other people happy? And also the thought of missing out on the opportunity of falling in love, which is I think the best thing in the whole entire world, the thought that you would give that up for just things that are just not like, they're just so not real. Like there's nothing more important than falling in love and being in love with yourself too at the same time. And if you're hiding that, then there's no way that you can love yourself if you are walking around thinking that like there's something wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfect. Yeah, you don't want your life to become broke back mountain. <laughs> that movie is the best. And that's the takeaway. <laughs> that's the takeaway. Don't they should have been together. Life. So don't yes. do that to yourself. Jeez. <laughs> this isn't Montana. Uh, <laughs> I love that movie. It was really good. Beautiful. They're so hot. I know. <laughs> They're so good looking. Um, what's one of the most important things that you feel like you've learned in your life? Hmm. Oh my gosh, so much. There's just so much. Um, I think just like, I think the most important thing in the world, which I guess is, I don't know if everyone would relate to this, but like, is just to be yourself and find any way that you can be the most you that you can be, whether that's like, you're gay, or it's just like the way you want to express yourself, or it's like the job you want to have, like, don't live your life, like, just like, go to school and do a nine to five job if you have like a crazy aspiration to be like I don't know live your dream like go be the version of yourself that you want to be what was your life before learning your um, most important thing I guess well I guess for you was the come out so your life before I was sad (laughs) (laughs) yeah sad and lonely I mean there was a time in my life where I genuinely thought I would like marry a boy and just like do it and I was like my gosh I can't do it. <laughs> like three makeouts in a. Did you try to watch like? Later. Did you try to watch like straight porn or something to help you? Yeah, but I watch straight porn now, to be honest. Yeah, I have friends who are uh, uh, my my lesbian friends. Some of them watch like gay porn, and yeah. that's what turns them on. So I can watch, yeah, I'm like I don't know. I, I watch girl and girl so porn. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's not. It's just so funny because my channel, I like, like I never even said that I never had sex with a boy before, but I only have done that because I've had this. I think irrational fear that if I told my audience that that there would be people who follow me who think that maybe if they did have sex that like some that that's bad which I totally disagree with I think like sex is also just sex like I don't think it's that big of a deal I think we've made it a way I'll bigger fall in deal. love with you but sex normally is not a big deal but for me I would love you <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> totally kidding but no I just think I, I think there's a I, I don't know but I think that even having a word like a uh, gold star lesbian is kind of like negative because it's like, who cares? Like, yeah, it makes it seem as if you're one lesbian is better. Yeah, than the other yeah. One. Like, I'm not any better of a lesbian because I didn't have sex with a boy. I'm just like from Dallas, so it was yeah. actually really easy not to have sex. Like, all my friends were abstaining from sex, so it was like, yeah, me too. Thank God, I can't have sex either. <laughs> That's a sin. I'm just gonna have <laughs> sex with girls instead. <laughs> um. Whoops. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So th these are things people wrote on the internet. Violet's like, I did not say this. No, but I swear I didn't say this. I'm curious about these things, but I didn't <laughs> say them. Okay. Lesbians who are multiple orgasmers. How do you know when to stop? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, like that, when you're tired, like when you need to go get a glass of water, like I think this person gets, thinks that lesbians will just like, keep what? orgasming. Like, yeah, like, we're not gonna just like go on and on forever. It's not like the energizing bunny. You're like you can, when you feel like you did the dumb thing, you can stop. That's it. Okay, what does queer mean exactly? I always thought it just meant gay, but apparently not. Anyone who identifies as queer slash knows someone who identifies as queer want to answer answer this? Hmm. I think queer for me is like an umbrella term. It's just like, it's like the whole community. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, think, I think a lot of these words mean a lot of different things to different queer people. Like for me, I think it's just an overarching, like whatever. It's like, if you're gay or if you're lesbian or if you're trans, like you could, all those people could identify as queer in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's I think it's kind of a gray area. It's not necessarily like like this is what it means. Um okay, the next one is do all lesbians not shave? Um I definitely shave. <laughs> I'm definitely shave, but you don't have to. Not even all straight women shave. <laughs> what the fuck is that question? Yeah, that's true. It's uh, 2019. Shave what you want and don't shave what you don't want. I agree. So most, so most people have a distinct accent based on the part of the country they are from. I'm only referring to U.S. people. Why do many gay people, I'm thinking they're talking about gay guys, gay yeah. people have the same campy accent regardless of where they are from? There's actually like documentaries about this and like oh. actual research about that and like also about how a lot of gay men have a lisp. And like it's like a whole like speech pathology situation that like is too intense for me to explain. And I don't even know that they have like the information. I I would assume that some it's subconscious. Like it's just like a subconscious trying to like relate to the people that are you feel like you are like. But I also think that that is something that's kind of um not not necessarily like happening as much anymore. I feel like the queer community is becoming a lot more diverse as more and more people feel comfortable to come out. Like there are a lot more like super masculine guys that are coming out of the closet. Like are they called bears? Yes, they're bears. <laughs> okay. She's got some knowledge. <laughs> but beards is pubic hair for you. <laughs> no, because you said we touched each other's I forgot what you said. We licked each other. I thought you said we licked each other's beards. Definitely did it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, why is partner the preferred term for a significant other as opposed to boyfriend or girlfriend? I don't, that, I think that's false. I don't think it's a preferred term. I think that maybe in a lot, I think maybe in the past it became kind of like how I was talking about safety earlier. Like if you just say partner, then you're not gendering your significant other. And like, say you worked in like a corporate office to say, oh, my partner is like cooking dinner. And then you're not like outing yourself all the time, I guess would be why that maybe in my, that's based purely off of just like, what I think. I'm not really, I should know that answer. Um, I'm not into that as a word. <laughs> like, I don't, so you'll say just, you'll say I girlfriend. would say girlfriend. Yeah. Well, and, I, unless it wasn't an issue. Uh, like, I mean, I wouldn't even probably like in Ubers and stuff is when I feel the most like censored where I just like, don't say things about being gay or not just cause yeah. you never fucking know. So like, I'm on my way to my boyfriend, Matt King's house. Yeah. Can you that's what I, I've said it before. No, I'm <laughs> No, I just wouldn't even say that. I'm like, I'm going to my friend's house. Oh, I'm um, straight woman here. Why do lesbians move in together so quickly? Will we answer that, right? The U-Haul, yeah. Yeah. Connection. Okay, real question. If you're a transgender person and you're attracted to the sex you you once were, are you gay or are you straight? As in, if you're trans men attracted to women, do you refer to yourself as straight? Wow. Okay, a trans person would definitely always be better to answer questions about trans people than me. But um, from the experience I have with trans friends, it's just it would be like if you're a trans guy and you date a girl, you're straight. But also you could just be queer and you could also date just because you're in just because you're dating a girl or boy or non-binary, whatever, any person at that time, you could be bisexual. So like it, it doesn't I don't know, I think. 
people get too focused on a label, yeah. which just doesn't fucking matter. Labels, there are a lot of power behind labels. And like, it's really important for some people to have one because then you feel like you found a community or whatever. But also, I think that the like, I, I think also straight people need the labels. Like they're freaking out because they're like, what's going on? <laughs> and like gay people, queer people are way more like, oh, who cares? Like it doesn't really matter. But straight people are like, what do you mean? If you're trans and you're dating this girl, what are you? It's like, oh my God. Or maybe they're also just trying to understand. Yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying. It's it's like, it's like they're just like trying to get the knowledge. But like, I think that like the labels have gone so like, we've gone so aggressive with the labels that it's almost like chill. I, I agree with that. Yeah. It's so overwhelming for me. <laughs> it's overwhelming for me. <laughs> Do you ever get that too? Because you're, you're lesbian. People are like, can I ask you some trans questions? You're like, okay, why are you asking me that? Yeah, definitely. I'm, and I just think that it's a sensitive topic. And I think that like based off trans friends that I've had, they prefer to speak for themselves as do any community. Like you wouldn't ask like a Jewish person would rather talk about like being Jewish than have like a Christian person explain right. the experience of a Jewish person. You're like, right. we like can if, talk for ourselves. Like if somebody came to us and they're like, Shannon, tell me about the Holocaust while I'm sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. Like, ask me, man. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. And like, people want to speak for themselves. And especially a community that hasn't had a lot of um, exposure or voice as to date, like where lesbians have had a lot more. Like, I don't need to be like a cis white lesbian explaining the trans community. Define to everyone what cis is. Cis means that you are the gender, you are you identify as the gender that you were um, assigned at birth. Got it. Does that make sense? Yes. No, I know what cis is. Okay. Yeah, but that's... how do you feel about all those um, n n pronouns and stuff like that? Because for some people, they're like, I don't care. Like, I don't want to mention them. But then some people find that disrespectful because that person doesn't care. Like, how, what are your thoughts on that? Do you then now start to say like, I am Shannon. I go by she, the, her. Uh, yeah, her. I yeah. think, yeah, I think there are like, a, there are spaces where I think it's really necessary to ask people, pro, ask people's pronouns. And like, especially like, I mean, I think there are people who think that you should do that all the time and maybe you should. Um, I think it's a new, it's not new. It's just, it's becoming more mainstream to the fact that people even are saying the word cis. Like, I think I saw maybe it was Jimmy Fallon or someone said the word cis on like an interview. And I was like on their like show. And I was like, that's crazy. Cause I think a lot of the world doesn't, doesn't know what that means. I just think it's important for everyone to be educated and also just use the pronouns that someone wants you to use. It's, it's really what about, hard. what about people that say that the pr pronoun stuff is just some, you just, you just want attention, like stop. You're just I mean, I think like, fuck you. <laughs> like, just do if someone's saying, Hey, it would make me more comfortable if you did this. Like the same as if you walked into someone's house and they're like, hey, it would make me more comfortable if you took your shoes off. Are you going to be like, no, fuck you. I'm going to keep my shoes on. So it's the same thing. If someone's like, hey, I'd really like it if you call me they, them. Then you just do it because it's respect. It's just yeah. it's common just think... courtesy to just do what someone's asking you to do. Or if you have such a problem with whatever that person's fucking pronouns are that you can't figure it out then maybe you shouldn't be that person's friend because they should only have friends who can figure that out. Okay, next question that I'm reading, this person said, I don't understand why anyone decides to make sexual preference the primary way they identify themselves. I'm a heterosexual male, but I don't broadcast that. I just am. <laughs> I, must, I might say that I am a mountain climber, a hiker, a nerd, a runner, a father, an outside sales guy, or any member of other definitions. Why is sexuality identification so primary for the LGBT community? Or am I being swayed only by what I see in the media? Oh my god, I really hate this guy. <laughs> this is like the worst question. And I've I felt ever bad heard. when he was like, "I'm a male." It's like, why do you lesbians fucking hate? Me? Yeah, That's basically yeah. Also, when your sexuality is like, we're born and people assume you're assumed you're straight from the moment you're born. So yeah, of course you don't feel like you need to tell people that you're not because you've just you have grown up your whole life with all this privilege of just being exactly what everyone wanted you to be—a straight white man. I mean, maybe you're not white, but could be based off of the mountain climbing yeah. and all these other things that you you mentioned about yourself no i just i mean that's just a stupid question like if the world assumes you're something you're not you have to tell them otherwise i have to tell people i'm a lesbian because people assume that i'm not i mean yeah. i don't it's not like I, i've also said in this whole thing that i spend a lot of time not clarifying my sexuality when i'm in spaces where i feel like i can't but like 
also being gay is is like this big a part of me but obviously we're talking about it so like i have to talk about it right now but like it's not like i go around the world like every day i'm like i'm gay did you know hey what's up i'm gay can i have the venti uh (laughs) yeah before i even say my name like what's your name gay shannon gay i'm a homosexual (laughs) homo shannon Shannon. thank you (laughs) yeah big lesbian right over there (laughs) you can write that down um, but I mean, I, I think where he's coming from, it must be an older generation. It kind of probably feels like people are throwing it in his face. Yeah. But I guess you're right. Cause then I will assume then you're straight. Cause we all just assume everyone's straight. So then almost like you have to tell me, but then if you tell me, I'm like, why do you always have yeah, to talk why about, it about it? that? Well, it's <laughs> like, it's not about that, but it's just like, if you're going to sit here and tell me about 20 boyfriends of yours that I should <laughs> maybe meet, then I'm probably going to have to tell you that that's not going to happen. Um, but do you feel like being gay defines who you are? Or sometimes people are trying to define you by being gay? Uh, probably. But, I mean, it is a part of me. It's a part of who I am. It's not all of who I am. And, it, like, it's the same way that this guy, a definition for him would be mountain climber. Like, one of my definitions That's of like me a is a lesbian. Thing. Yeah. Well, I, I climb mountains, so I'm obviously not gay. I mean, like, one time I watched <laughs> porn, like, okay, fine, I suck dick once. But I then I climb the mountain the next day. So, like, I'm obviously not gay. <laughs> I can't believe he led with mountain climber. <laughs> like that is the I'm, I'm weirdest thing I could think of. He also did you realize that father was one of his descriptors, but it was like eight <laughs> eight adjectives in. Like yeah, that's pretty. Oh, yeah, that's a big deal. A dad. Yeah, I, oh, but and a I mountain have no climber. Mountain climber first, dad second. <laughs> <laughs> Literally what? <laughs> okay but it it was tricky like even doing this interview with you of course i want to talk about what it's like to come out and all these things because it's something i i don't know what it's like i'm curious but then another side of me is like oh shit i bet people that's what the first thing people want to talk to shannon about like is that going to be upsetting is she sick of only talking about being gay no i mean i think that like especially with what i've chosen to do it is like it's what i it is a part of what i talk about and i feel like i am i don't know I have experience talking about that, but we also talked about mental health, which yeah. is totally a different thing. And I also, am, I'm stoked to do this on your podcast where I think that I, I feel like I saw before you have like an 85% male following now. What the on, fuck? On your personal account. Literally no. On Instagram? I uh, swear. No. Are you lying? Is it because I show my tits sometimes? I swear you showed it one time. Don't you have a big male following on your I Instagram? I have an l- insanely large female following. That's on daddy issues. Viola Benson is 70% female. Daddy okay. issues is 85% female. And my podcast is like 90% female. No way. Yes. Okay, but they're straight, mostly. I'm not sure. I don't I can't. So I don't know. Sorry, I can't I, label you guys. But And I also have a large gay male following. So I don't know what's the percentage of that. True, but, true. But point being, like, I'm excited to be on... Whereas my audience is like 90% female on my Instagram. I'm sorry, but they're 90% female. And I would assume that a big portion of that, and it's just an assumption, but is queer. Whereas like, I would assume a good amount of your followers are not. So it's cool Um, to get to speak to like, I've, how much can you tell gay people about the experience of being gay? Like they are like, yeah, we get it. Me too. Anyway. Um, another question is which one of you is the man? Oh God. (laughs) perfect that's the one uh yeah that question just sucks it's neither one right obviously i think that we're just so stuck on gender roles like also if you sometimes you you could look at a straight couple and like if someone just wrote down their characteristics you might confuse which one you thought was the boy and the girl because they're like girls that are way more dominant there are girls who like want to pay for things there are girls that like there's you don't necessarily know just based off like characteristics like who's a boy and who's a girl so how does it work then like if you take someone out to dinner is it like who asked that who if i asked you out then i pay for it or is it always splitting the bill that does get kind of confusing oh you see (laughs) yeah but that that's more confusing in i would say when you're just dating someone like starting to date someone but it's not i think yeah it's probably like who asked who out usually i would say i don't know i guess so and then and it's then, kind of or, it is kind of more of like a gray area but i think that that should be the same with straight dating like i don't think i'm not that splitting the bill men should not pick up the bill every time i don't think in the beginning yeah <laughs> i don't think so oh okay you want me to pay for the dinner and suck your dick later i don't think so <laughs> what do i look like no yeah okay no such thing you're right if i was doing that now. too i would ask them to pay for the dinner but no 
I just think that the like, gender roles are so dumb and annoying and no I still want the man to treat me like a man and uh, yeah like I know it's like but you say you want everything equal I want equal pay like I feel like I'm not really asking for too much at this point like just give me equal pay because I'm doing the same job I want equal pay and then I want you to pay for everything Yes, it's a little well, it's bit like somebody said before this is why it's like why do men pay for women if you want everything equal because we don't have equal pay you're making more money than me you yeah, have to pay okay until there's equal pay men you're you're picking up the check at the first <laughs> at the beginning of the dating like obviously when you're when you're together and your partner's now for a while then yeah like i'll sometimes pay and vice versa but like, no i do i like that yeah. like a guy a man opening the door for me and and stuff like that because I, I do come off very dominant and masculine i have masculine energy yeah so with guys a lot of times i do like i do enjoy feeling a little more lady well that's okay i mean that's also like you're probably attracting boys who want to pick up your check also well they know they they know better <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah and for lesbians i guess it's more confusing so what are some terms that people use for lesbians that i know like obviously i know lipstick lesbian yeah what else is there butch is that uh, a term yeah butch uh chapstick lesbian oh there's always lipstick and then there's chapstick there is because i use both yeah so, so you would be either one i would say you're a lipstick lesbian well then there's just like femme. i don't know i'm pretty masculine no like i would be a top like i, I would be fucking the girl you can sure. be a top and you can be a top and be a lipstick lesbian oh okay those That's things aren't mutually exclusive either so it just has to do with how you dress yeah it's basically like just your so you are are you a chapstick lesbian probably i don't know i there was a long time where people used to be like what what kind of lesbian do you identify as <laughs> and i was like um it took me like seven years to just be okay with identifying as a lesbian like i don't need to go into subcategories i'm a lesbian that's good for me you yeah. can decide for yourself what you want some people like to be like yeah i'm butch or like i'm a stud like there's, there's stud a stud lesbian what's a stud I'm not really sure i've always been a little confused about that one but i know someone who identifies it so like i like look at her and i'm like that's a stud <laughs> lesbian but i don't know i mean i think it gets too crazy do you go for girls more feminine than you or less feminine than you more feminine than me got it so then with you like is this still like two li li lipstick lesbians can date each other? Yeah. Anyone. Fascinating. I, the whole top and bottom phenomenon for me, especially in, like in lesbian sex is, uh, I don't, I've never understood it. Right. I like think that most lesbians I know are like pretty verse. Perfect. So talking about that, <laughs> yeah. what is, how do you, they, <laughs> <laughs> I what? wish that everyone could, the way your face is. How, um, <laughs> what? Like, what happens? Are you asking me how lesbians have sex? Yeah, like, I kind of know. <laughs> oh, my God. Or I know how. Do you? But like Based everyone... off your porn searches only? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess I do, like, girl-on-girl -girl porn. But it's not always sex. I mean, I don't consider it sex. Oh, I guess. Oh, shit, I guess in a way I'm not considering it sex. It wasn't, like, the guy being the girl. But what would you guys consider sex? And why does everyone always say that, you know, lesbian scissor? Because I feel like... Because I've once I found out what scissoring was, I was like, "That's that looks fucking exhausting." There's no way anyone does that every night. Like I would be, I would be in the best shape of my life, though. <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, so then everything is a myth with lesbian sex. I swear, because I you scissor. Yeah, every time. No, but I. That's I exhausting. Have. Wow, you you must have really strong legs. No. No, but I hate. That's actually something that bothers me. I've seen like a lot of like actually really like popular or like famous lesbians be like scissoring is not real and it doesn't exist and i'm like what you can't speak for everyone with like how you have sex or like whatever i think scissoring is real but you should do it whatever you want and i think it doesn't work with all people like it's like a it's like a puzzle piece situation going on yeah there. literally i'm trying to imagine it in my head right now <laughs> please don't <laughs> i'm not imagining um, you i'm just yeah, imagining yeah. the okay so yeah what happens when the two you get a girl gets with the girl and they want to have sex what's the definition of sex for lesbians okay i think it's different for everyone like i've had a lot of conversations with people and like a lot of lesbians where we have differences of opinions for me i i think it's when you're both butt ass naked and that to me feels like sex compared to because so you i'm like on the other side of the room we both took our clothes no off. like oh, oh shit my we had god sex. yeah i had lesbian I've, sex i've had sex with a lot of people no <laughs> no when you like are 
like hooking up and you're both like naked. But you could also there. I don't know. It it is it is like more. It's not black and white because it's not just like I put pulled my dick out and put it in you because it's just penetration. Yeah. Because also, guys, okay, some people are like, if you both came, but I'm like, that seems stupid to me too. Yeah, because it's like, is it the scissoring that's that, or is it going down, or do you have to bring a toy in right away and then that's sex? No, that's also a huge misconception. Like, not all lesbians even have sex toys, and they definitely, for the oh my god, the majority of lesbians that I know and talk to, which I won't speak for all lesbians because that pisses me off, but. I would say you don't use a toy more often than you do. But you you can have sex toys. But they're you not sure like you have sex toys. I have some sex toys, but they're not <laughs> I, my parents can really not watch this. Anyway. But you're saying you don't have to it's it's like a preference also with straight people when that yeah. sex. not everyone wants to use toys for yeah. sex. Yeah. Also it's like a hassle to like get that like you know what I mean? Sometimes you're just like in the heat of a moment. You're not gonna be like, let's go and get that. So, like, I've done that before. I'm just like, hold on. Can I just get this really quick? And I opened my drawer and I was like, hold on. Just hold on. And I was like, just one second. Yep. <laughs> oh <laughs> like I did God. that. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think there's not a, there's not a right or wrong answer to that question. And also like, I don't think every time you sleep with someone, it's a little different. I would hope I like, unless you're like going in the bed and you do the same like position every time with the same, like foreplay before it like no that's... i guess i guess what it is now that i'm thinking about it when people are confused i think it's probably because when you when a girl sleeps with a boy it's like every time every time the his penis enters her she's like oh it's another yeah. number yeah like okay a... so i've slept with five guys then yeah yeah versus yeah, if you guys no. all have different definitions of that then it's like well how many girls have you been with and you're like well i don't know what do you consider yeah it is confusing i've been i mean i've gone naked in front of uh 23 people so then i guess i've been with 23 people no this is actually something i've thought about before because i really i think that there are probably girls that i think i hooked up with that maybe thought they slept with me and like that's just but like also who it doesn't really matter it's just like right it's just a number it's just a number it's just a pronoun it's just your opinion <laughs> nothing just matters get over it <laughs> get over it okay but scissoring is real and is great but it's not for everyone so it maybe depends on your clitoris i'm not sure or your labia did i get it? <laughs> oh my god i need to do my research on that yeah i need to look into Watch some it. porn Oh, I guess I never really watched the scissoring porn. It was always... It's also called tribbing. Tribbing? Mm -hmm. Is that the better word, tribbing? I don't know. I just know that that's a word. Okay, tribbin. I'm stressed tribbing. out. I'm literally going to tell my mom and dad they can't listen to <laughs> My last podcast, me talking about Christianity, this one, <laughs> scissoring. Awesome. What happened? Well, I was just curious, to be honest. I no, feel like I'm actually glad I, wa I want to clear that up. I wonder how many people are going to, oh my gosh, I feel like a lot of my followers are going to watch this and be like, Shannon lesbians don't scissor. It's like really big, weird. It, you guys try it, it's fine. It oh, can happen. Um, okay. Do you masturbate? <laughs> uh, yeah. Dope. I just want, I think it's. Everyone should. It's healthy. Thank you. Because you got so uncomfortable, I just really want to get it out there. Yeah. You just wanted to see me squirm. That's okay. No, because I also think it's so, even I used to feel really uncomfortable talking about if I ever masturbated. I was like, oh, it's so weird. And it's so much easier to like post about it than actually verbally no, say, say it. it. Yeah. So I just think it's important because I feel like everyone should masturbate. It's good for you. It's but awesome. masturbating, especially for women, feels so taboo. Like a guy can be like, oh, I just jacked off three times. Oh, today. yeah. It's like like in Euphoria. Have you watched this show? I love that. So show. good. Like those two little boys are like, girls don't watch porn boys yeah. watch porn yeah like, what and the whole like the whole show which is why i really love it is that it happens in high school and it's literally the epitome of high school where it's all about pleasuring the man all the time it's like oh i bet you know how to suck dick and she's like i'd love to and like it I makes her feel that. good about herself for yeah. sucking dick and that's honestly every single girl's high school experience where we have no understanding of our body our pleasure and it's all about satisfaction for the man true it's just sex in general yeah Ex yeah yeah Ugh. Ugh. what a problem be a lesbian you won't have that problem <laughs> um if you can go back to how you came out is there anything you would change on about it no because i think everything happens for a reason and like the way that everything happened for me is like why i'm even like sitting in this chair so like i think that i definitely could have made it less painful on myself but like because of everything that happened is why i'm here so i don't i have no regrets Okay, I'm sorry that I'm going back to the sex part. I forgot to ask. Oh my God. Do lesbians have anal? 
Oh my God. I'm sure. The other day we went out and I, I think I was pretty drunk and I started to talk about anal and I was like, here's what you guys all need to do when it comes to anal because oh one God, of my you friends did. told me. Remember? Yeah, you did. That did happen. <laughs> I Facts. was so drunk. Facts. I was just explaining what you need to do. You guys all went home. I went out after. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay. I I was like on one and I'm like, there's no way I can go to sleep. So I, I Ubered um to my friend's house after. No way. I went to you guys' apartment. Okay. Yeah. It's Friday night. What are you getting into? <laughs> into someone. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's getting into me. Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not having hot sex yet. I haven't had sex in like eight months. I'm pretty like that's the thing. And I, I, the people that listen to my podcast know that is that like daddy Shushi is like my alter ego in a lot of ways. And even who <clears> I am on the Internet. So not I think people mistake that if you love talking about sex, or you're intrigued by sex, that that means you're insanely you're like, promiscuous. Yeah, totally. I'm not promiscuous. Like, I love being with a partner. I like to be just, yeah. I like being with partners. And I haven't found somebody I feel fully connected with. So I haven't slept with anyone like eight months. And yeah. that's fine. But people also assume then, then that means being promiscuous is wrong. No, no I don't think, it's a I think personal be whatever preference. you want to be. Yeah. I'll, you, yeah. You shouldn't have sex if you don't want to have sex. And you should have sex if yeah. you want to have sex. And that's it. And I've learned now that to love myself enough that I don't feel guilty if I don't have sex with someone. And I feel like that used to be for me for like the longest time where I'm like, like you shit. felt like you like owed it to someone. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. well, they're spending time with me. I should do something as a thing. I should thank them. God, no. Like, you know, so I like, I love that I can go out with someone, not have sex with them, even maybe not kiss them. And I don't feel guilty. It's like, yeah, good. That's definitely, whatever I want. That's a positive growth that you've gone through. I know. Thank you. What's uh, something people don't know about you? Oh. <laughs> That I never had sex with a boy, that I scissored. I, we've said it. A lot of things have been said that no one knew. Um, what? I don't know. That's probably it. What's a big myth about you that you want to crush? A myth? Hmm. Maybe that I'm, I'm super uncomfortable talking about sex. Like, I'm not that uncomfortable talking about sex. It's just, there's like a, it feels weird to talk to like a couple hundred thousand people about sex. Especially like, it feels just really personal to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think I've gotten a rep of being like just super goody two shoe and like, oh Shannon's like squirmy and awkward. Also, that's another thing I have like a really bad uh thing of people thinking that I'm super awkward, which I like. I you, you know me. I I don't think that I'm actually awkward. It's just like um like a cork to make people. It's like a defense mechanism to make other people feel less awkward. I just by be making like, them awkward. I'll, no, I'll just be. Like, oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm like awkward, which I'm like. It's become. It's a weird thing that I do. Like, hey, hey guys. It's very like Kristen Stewart. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's hey. what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm awkward. I think like I get awkward. Yeah, and- I'm. Aw- it's not that I'm not. I, I'm awkward, but I'm not like I can speak to people. Like I'm yeah. not like I feel like I'm socially capable. Yeah. No, that I think it's endearing. Like whatever quirks you have, it makes you cuter. What are some LGBT YouTubers that you recommend for listeners to um, find out about? Maybe if they don't know. Let me think of some good ones. Stevie Bobby talks a lot about like um, sex education. That's awesome. Um, I'm friends with so many that I'm like, oh my god. Ricky Thompson, he's like hilarious and the best. I love him. Ricky Thompson's really funny. Ari Fitz does a really good job of talking about like. I'm trying to th- talk about people who like actually talk about queer situations too. Ari Fitz is great. Um, oh my God, there's so many. Like Alexis G's all, Georgia Bridgers, uh, Allie Hills. There's so many. Cammie Scott, that's my ex-girlfriend. You can watch her channel. <laughs> cool. Good for you. She talks about like being a feminine lesbian. I think that's important too. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. I, w- I wish I could think of Amber's Closet. Okay. Who else? I know I'm going to not say someone and they're going to be like, shady. And I don't mean it to be shady. There's so many. I Also, I think you get in there and you watch a few of these people and it's just like, it'll be like recommended on recommended. Like, it's like kind of like a whole of like LGBT creators. What does it mean to be a part of the LGBT community? And how can someone become a, an ally for it? Yeah. Or how can people become more involved? Hmm, that's a really good question. My mom's an amazing ally. I wish I could just show you her because she does the best stuff. Um, I think that like, I think for me, a really big part about being an ally is just being vocally, like vocally standing up for gay people when you're not just around gay people, like to have the balls in a space where maybe one of your like friends says something homophobic and be like, that's not cool. 
Because that is like, it's hard, especially as a straight person. Like there's all this fear of like, are they going to think I'm gay if I don't like stand up for gay people and like all this stuff. But like, there is a lot of power in just not letting people get away with bullshit behind closed doors. And I think that's a really big part about being an ally. And then just like volunteering and the normal kind of things too. But like, I really think that's like my number one thing is like standing up for people when they're not there. So what does it mean when someone says, I'm a part of the LGBT community? Does it mean that that means you're queer or can a straight person be a part of the LGBT community, but they're straight? No. Or do they have to be then an ally? Of yeah, the they're just an ally. A straight person can is not a part of the LGBT community, but they can be an ally of the LGBT community. And that's dope too. Like going back to like even that ally thing, it's like, it's the same as like, I mean, it's not the same. There's so much difference in this example but it's like if you're in a room and someone says something racist and you don't say something like that's fucked up like i think you're contributing to racism same thing with homophobia if you're in a room and someone says something homophobic and you just like let it slide like that's cool that's not cool so like be an ally and fucking be like hey brad no i don't care if you like to climb mountains you can't <laughs> talk like that <laughs> Um, wait, this is actually another question I, I just forgot to ask, but I am fascinated by it because, okay, you know how in a regular straight relationship, couples get jealous because if my boyfriend hung out with other girls all the time, I would get incredibly jealous, just incredibly normal. So I'm kind of curious when you are dating another girl and she has other female friends, I'm assuming you have a ton of female friends, straight and gay, mm -hmm. is that, do you guys just kind of have, do you kind of have to get used to like not being jealous or upset? Like how do you deal with jealousy then? Is that different for you? No, I mean, it's a good question. I think, uh, I think like, I, have, I don't know. I definitely people get jealous. I don't get jealous about that. I don't know why. I just like, I guess I'm like confident. I don't, I don't really well, know. Maybe because it's always a group of friends. Yeah. You guys well, okay. So other. yeah, that's what another thing I was going to say is I think a big thing that happens with like a group of queer women is you all become friends with each other. So then you kind of like know each other so well that you're like, oh, so-and-so is hanging out with so-and-so. Like they would never even like flirt with each other because you just know the dynamics of like that friend group so well. Yeah. Um, what about when you add in straight girlfriends into the mix? I guess, I, I don't know. I'm not, I just like, I'm not jealous. I guess I know, I guess some of my friends do, but I think you I think you only get jealous if you're like not really secure in your relationship. So that's a good statement in general, whether it's you're in a gay or straight relationship. Yeah, I agree exactly. with that. Okay, so okay. Well, I guess Plus I'm there's like a lot of different types of lesbians and I know a lot of people who have very specific types. So like All right. you know what I mean? There's like times you could be hanging out with a bunch of people that I'm like, I know that's not their type, so it's like not a big deal. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add that I didn't ask you? I feel like we covered a lot. I'm I'm stoked for like like I said like I feel like not a lot of people get the opportunity to just like sit down with someone and ask a bunch of questions that maybe you would not feel that comfy to ask like just like at a bar or you're like sitting at dinner and you're like so how was your coming out experience <laughs> like that's pretty heavy stuff so hopefully it's like educational and someone learned something and also hopefully I didn't offend anyone that's a part of the queer community and say say something that you're like Shannon no but. Look, I we mean, all have our own experiences. So hope I was speaking my truth. And if it's not yours, you should educate me. That's that's a great way to think. I, I agree with that. You know, I don't think I mean, I don't think anything you said was offensive in any type of way, but I, I agree yeah. with what you're saying. But no, it's been great. And you seem like you are so genuine. And I can feel all your emotions. And like uh, I, I almost cried. I almost cried too. Uh, <laughs> Did you not see? Uh, yeah, no, you almost crying made me almost cry. I was like, oh my God. Like, I just feel everything. And like, it's like when I hear any type of stories of anyone overcoming adversity or just like hating themselves and loving themselves or battling depression, it's also relatable. I don't care. I don't need to, to have come out to understand like your pain or to imagine your pain. You know what yeah, I'm saying? To have empathy. And I love that. Like, I love that about me. It's something I used to hate about me and I used to suppress. So being able to feel other people's emotions and want to cry because because I can yeah. feel your pain, like it's, there's nothing more beautiful than that. No, there's so much power in having empathy. Yes, and there's so much power in crying and there's so much power in feeling. And the fact that you sat here and you talked about coming out and I'm so proud of you. And the fact that you talked about you know, going through depression and, and how you overcame it versus just telling people you're sad, like, those are amazing things. As much as we think those things are not a big deal, there's so many people out there who haven't even gone that far. Yeah, totally. And haven't yeah. like haven't learned how to speak about these things. 
I think any day where you wake up and you're able to get out of your bed or you're able to be yourself is a, is an accomplishment. Totally. Definitely. Pat yourself on the back. Have you been depressed recently? Uh, yeah, probably earlier this year. Probably. Okay, and yeah. <laughs> how did you get yourself out just by realizing? Um, yeah, I, I really wish that I went to therapy and I want to go to therapy, but like healthcare is really confusing in America. And that was like my biggest, I was like trying to figure out how to get a therapist. And then at the same time, like kind of like figured some stuff out on my own. Um, but I am a huge, like you should definitely go to therapy. Therapy is so powerful. Um, I just feel like a hypocrite because I didn't do it. But um, how did I get out of it? Uh, I don't know. I think I don't. I'm like, am I still depressed? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, it's hard. It's every time I've been depressed, it like kind of is a different situation to get out of it. Like sometimes it's just kind of like mixing up my routine and like trying something different or traveling or like just getting out of this headspace of like. I think when I'm depressed, I'm like, things will never get better. Like in my mind, I'm like, I will never feel better again. I'll never feel better again. I'm never going to like feel happy again. And then it just kind of takes me like pushing myself out of that like bubble of like, oh, it can't get better and like doing things. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm laughing. I'm having fun. I'm looking forward to this. Like I have this event coming up where I have like just planning and, and like being busy, but also taking care of yourself and, and recognizing that you have limitations when you're not feeling like your best. But yeah, I think just like. Do you feel happy now? Right the second? Yeah. Ecstatic. I'm feeling gay. Me too. Like in the happy way. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so where can everyone find you? Uh, I have a YouTube channel and I have an Instagram and I have a Twitter and they're all Now This Is Living. Now This Is Living. But then she also does photography and it's oh, called yeah. Now This Is Film. That's true. Violet, should we take pictures? Okay, right I'll now? Take, no, but I'll take your... Well, I actually have a camera on me. But no, I look disgusting. Now. I'll take your pictures sometime. Oh my God, yeah. I would love for you to take my picture. Okay. Look All right, well, Shannon, thank you so much for being queer. Thank you so much for being alive. Thank you so much for being happy. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Yes, I'm so happy you came on. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions when it comes to the LGBT community or anything, please make sure to reach out to Shannon. Like I said, her Instagram is now this is living. So yeah. reach out to Shannon and of course, check out all the other um, YouTubers she mentioned that are part of the LGBT community. So anyway, again, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you guys next Thursday. This was, what's the name of my podcast? Oh, Too Tired to Be Crazy. Okay, <laughs> bye guys. <laughs> too Tired to Remember the Name of the Podcast. Yeah. <laughs>